Okay, let's move ahead and find the next value that is RMS voltage. Then I will be calculating RMS current and from there we will be calculating the AC input power. So let us start with our fourth quantity that is AC input voltage and we will term it as VRMS. So that is what we need to calculate. Now see this RMS root mean square. So it's the mean value whose square needs to be taken and then the root of entire thing. The DC voltage and the DC current that we have calculated was on the basis of the logic that the DC value is nothing but it is the average value. Now mean value is also the average value. So I will be taking the same formula but then I will be squaring it and I will be taking the root of that and that will give me the RMS value. So let us do that. So what will be VRMS? So VRMS will be first of all take the mean so it will be 0 to 2 pi of VI d omega t then it's this will be the mean of that then what I need to do I need to square that so I am squaring it and then I need to take the root of it so I am taking to the power half so it will be nothing but the root of that value so let us calculate that so it is going to be 1 upon 2 pi integration of 0 to 2 pi now what is vi so it will be vm sin omega t square d omega t and the root of entire thing again it will be 1 upon 2 pi now i am just squaring the term so it will be vm square sin square omega t d omega t and then this okay then it will be 1 upon 2 pi so i will be taking vm square outside because it is peak voltage which is constant so vm square by 2 pi is constant so it is taken outside and then i will be having 0 to 2 pi of sin square omega t d omega t and the root of the entire thing okay then let us go ahead and see what will happen so it will be vm square upon 2 pi which is constant then 0 to pi of why because so here also it should be pi because from pi to 2 pi it is 0 value so I can write it here like this plus 0 to pi of sorry pi to 2 pi of 0 d omega t so it is 0 that's why I am not considering it like this so now sin square omega t can be written as 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 ok right the entire thing 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 d omega t and then the root of this so vm square upon 2 pi ok what will happen so it will be 0 to pi of 1 by 2 minus cos of 2 omega t by 2 d omega t and the root of that next step will be vm square by 2 pi then now I am putting the value it will be pi by 2 minus it will be sin of 2 omega t by 4 and here I need to put the value 0 to pi and then the root of this ok then it will be vm square by 2 pi and <coughs> this is going to be 0 right because sin of 2 pi minus sin of 0 it will be 0 
1 minus 1 it will be 0 so only thing that will remain will be pi by 2 and then root so now let us cancel the thing so pi cancels with this pi this 2 multiplied by 2 will be 4 so the bracket will be vm square upon 4 and root of that so that will be vm by 2 that will be vm by 2 so from this expression again i will be telling you how we have calculated that we are calculating rms value which is called as vrms root mean square so taking the mean value squaring it and then taking the root of that okay you have two limits 0 to pi and pi to 2 pi for 0 to pi you will be having the value called as vm sin omega square t okay and for pi to 2 pi the value is going to be 0 y because the output in the negative half cycle is 0 and the negative half cycle it is available between the uh, time period pi to 2 pi so it will be 0 okay uh, similarly let us calculate the fourth one now the fifth fifth value so i'll be writing ac input current I RMS. Let us calculate that. Now I RMS is equal to V is equal to I R. So I will be V by R. So it is V RMS upon R F plus R L. Okay. Now what is V RMS? It is V M by 2 into R F plus R L from here we have written it vm by 2 rms is equal to okay after that what will happen okay now this peak voltage vm is equal to what it is nothing but it is im multiplied by rf plus rly because ohm's law says vm is equal to, uh, v is equal to ir so vm is equal to im into rf plus r now let us put this value here so irms will be equal to I am multiplied by RF plus RL divided by 2 multiplied by RF plus RL. Now this RF plus RL and this RF plus RL get cancelled and we get the value to be I am by 2. So IRMS comes out to be I am by 2. See this. VRMS is equal to VM by 2 and IRMS is equal to I am by 2. Similarly, what was VDC? VDC was Vm by pi and IDC was Im by pi. So, similar value. Just the thing is, one is in terms of voltage, one is in terms of current. Okay. Now, let us go for the next value that we need to calculate. That is AC power and after that, we will be going towards the efficiency of the circuit. Okay. So, let us start with the... Uh, sixth quantity now we have which is AC input power PAC now we know that electronically if you want to calculate power that power is going to be the multiplication of voltage and current so I will be writing VRMS multiplied by IRMS so what is VRMS value it is VM by 2 what is IRMS value? It is IM by 2. So, of course, we can have the value VM IM upon 4. VM IM upon 4. I am giving it equation number 2. Equation number 1, if you remember, it was given to DC output power. Now, let us go for the next term, which is very important, which is asked in the examination often, that is efficiency how efficiently how efficiently the circuit is performing how efficiently the circuit has converted the AC input power to DC output power okay and is represented by percentage eta it is represented by percentage eta how to define that it is also called as conversion efficiency it is also called as conversion efficiency so i will write conversion efficiency is defined as 
the ratio of DC output power to AC input power. It is defined as the ratio of DC output power to AC input power. You know the efficiency that efficiency is defined as output upon input. So in this case the output is DC output and the input is AC input. So we are taking that. Let us put this value. So it will be percentage efficiency equals to PDC upon PAC into 100 because we are taking the percentage. Now let us put the value. What is PDC? PDC is VM into IM upon pi square. It was VM by pi upon IM by pi. So it is VM IM multiplied by, sorry, divided by pi square. I am cross multiplying it and I am taking this value. So it will be 4 upon VM IM, this PAC value and multiplied by 100. So now see what will happen. This VM IM, this VM IM get cancel and we get 4 by pi square into 100. Let us calculate what is 4 by pi square. So by calculator I am going to calculate this value and then we will be writing it. So let us have the calculator. Okay, we will put 4 divided by so shift this pi pi square. Okay, and then answer multiplied by 100. So it is 40.52. It comes out to be 40.52 percent. That is, I can say, 40.6%. That is nothing but 40.6%. Now, they ask you in the examination to prove that the efficiency of half wave rectifier is equal to 40.6%. But see, what is, the ref what is the inference that we can draw from here? The inference that we can draw from here is only 40% of the input power is getting converted to the required DC still 60% if I consider loss also but still 60% of the input power is available and that input power which is not desired which is not desired it is called as a ripples so 60% ripples are still present in the DC output and that's why it is not that is not called that is not uh, called as a pure DC output but it is all this is called as pulsating DC output because it has some pulses, it has some ripples, okay, and that because of this lesser efficiency, only 40.6 percent half wave rectifier is not preferred, okay, and that is the main uh, issue why we prefer full wave rectifier. Okay, we'll see this when we will be studying full wave rectifier, but remember this: we have lots of ripples to be removed from here. But for that purpose, we need to calculate how many, how how much, how much percentage of ripples are present, okay? And for that purpose, we need to take the next analysis, and that next analysis is called as ripple factor. That is called as ripple factor. So let us go for that. So I'm taking this. I'm taking this as an eighth point now, and that eighth point, that eighth point is ripple factor ripple factor and it is represented by small r it is represented by small r so what is ripple factor so that is what we need to first of all understand and then we will be going for the expression of ripple factor remember this okay that is also important okay now see this i'm just writing certain points about the ripple factor the output of half wave rectifier consists of DC as well as AC components DC as well as AC components now I'm writing it the AC components present in the DC output 
is called as a ripple. It is called as the ripples. Okay, and the ratio of a ripple voltage, the ratio of ripple voltage to DC voltage is called as ripple factor. Of course, how much percentage of AC component present in the DC output that is what we need to calculate. So, of course, we need to take the ratio of ripple voltage. What are the ripples present in the DC output divided by the DC voltage okay or DC current so I can have remember this I can have this equation in terms of voltage I can have this equation in terms of current one and the same thing so expression is going to be similar for current as well as voltage so you can take any uh, of the components either you can take uh, the voltage value or the current value and you can get the answer so let us move ahead and uh, try to calculate the value so I am taking the expression now ok now first of all what is ripple voltage so I will be just commenting on what is ripple voltage first Dep represented by VR ripple voltage represented by VR now what is the meaning of ripple voltage see here we applied AC voltage we applied AC voltage and what we got is DC voltage so input let us consider I have applied 100 as input and I have got 40 as output which is DC pure DC because the conversion efficiency is 40% so you applied 100 but what you are getting only 40% still 60 percent is AC component how you calculated the 60 you have subtracted the output that you have got that is DC output that you got from the AC input you applied that is 100 so similar thing we can calculate and you got the ripple voltage so ripple voltage can be calculated as or ripple current can be calculated as so write ripple voltage VR can be calculated and ripple voltage is an AC quantity so we need to take the root mean square okay so take the root of the square values so I will write VRMS square which was your input voltage minus VDC square which is our DC voltage okay now what is the ripple factor now ripple factor is R which is the ratio of ripple voltage to DC voltage let us put the value VR is VRMS square minus VDC square divided by VDC now if I put the VDC inside this under root so I need to take the square of it right so it will be VRMS square minus VDC square upon VDC square because I have taken now VDC inside the root side now that will give me the value VRMS upon VDC whole square minus 1 why because VDC square VDC square will be 1 so this is what I have got but I know the values of VRMS and VDC so let us put the values so VRMS is VM by 2 so it will be Vm square by 4, right? So I'm taking the cross multiplication. What is Vdc? Vdc is Vm by pi. So pi square upon Vm square minus 1. What I've done, I have just put the values of VRMS and Vdc that we have already calculated in the earlier steps. So this Vm square, this Vm square will get cancelled and you will be left with pi square by 4 minus 1 and the root of that so let us put these values so let us take under root in under root I will be taking this okay and let us take the bracket and have the value pi square divided by 
divided by 4 and then entire minus 1 so you will be getting the value called as 1.1 so remember this value is a constant value this value is a constant value and this value will remain same for every half wave rectifier so whether you are getting any kind of parameters in the numerical but still remember the value of ripple factor will always come out to be 1.21 and that is a cross check for us in the numericals if you are not getting vrms uh, you are not getting the ripple voltage to be 1.21 in the half wave rectifier you need to understand that you have made a mistake in the you have made the mistake in the numerical that is what you need to remember okay so let's take the next parameter now uh, there are a few parameters that we need to consider okay before we take the other parameters but let us i told you because we can calculate the ripple factor in terms of voltage i can calculate the ripple factor in terms of current so let us try to calculate the ripple factor in terms of current okay so i'll write a ripple current you can just observe the changes that i will be making so it will be i rms square minus idc square similar thing okay only v is replaced by i voltage is replaced by current the remaining thing is c so now ripple factor r is equal to vr by vdc is equal to under root of vrms square minus vdc square upon vdc okay irm sorry so it will be under root of irms upon idc square minus 1 so it will be im square by 4 multiplied by pi square by m square minus 1 and that will be under root of pi square by 4 minus 1 it is 1.1 again so it is 1.21 again remember this so one and the same thing either you calculate in terms of voltage or you calculate in terms of current okay now let us move to the next parameter which is called as peak inverse voltage so next parameter is peak inverse voltage or it is called as piv it is also called as piv peak inverse voltage so what is the meaning of peak inverse voltage remember this i will write the definition of this peak inverse voltage is the maximum voltage across the diode when it is in or reverse bias when it is in reverse bias see we apply two half cycles to the diode first is positive half cycle so what is the maximum voltage it can have plus pm and then the diode is going to be in forward bias but when we apply the negative half cycle the diode goes in reverse bias what is the maximum negative voltage I can apply to the diode? It is the negative peak of the input voltage. So the negative peak of the input voltage is minus Vm. So we can write what is the maximum voltage I can apply in the reverse bias? Vm. So for half a rectifier, I will write PIV is equal to Vm. This is the maximum voltage I can apply in the reverse bias. Magnitude of, of course. I am not, consi not considering the sign but only the magnitude so this is the peak voltage that can be applied across the diode when it is in a reverse bias ok now let us take uh, the next parameter and that par parameter is called as transformer utilization factor transformer utilization factor or TUF transformer utilization factor or TF. See for that purpose I will be drawing the diagram of the rectifier. So this was our transformer 
I have told you that it is a step down transformer usually and then this is our circuit. So here we apply 230 volts, 50 hertz and then this is diode, this is RL and this is our V0. Okay. Now see the AC rating of the transformer is somewhat different. It is 230 volt, 50 hertz. Let us see. But what diode is getting is different voltage. Why? Because the primary voltage of the transformer is 230 volt, but the secondary voltage of the transformer is stepped down. We have stepped down it. Okay. So it will be with the ratio, it will be lowered down, right? So it is not the actual power which is given at the input, but it is the secondary voltage of the transformer which is given to the diode. Okay, so in this case we are calculating how much power the transformer was give, giving us that is the primary of the transformer was giving us to how much power is being converted by the rectifier at the output. Till now what we have calculated we have calculated the efficiency on the basis of what is given at this point and what is the output. So we are, we are taking the ratio of output to the input given to the diode but not the input which is given to the circuit. So if we consider the actual AC power which is given to the circuit and the output voltage and if we take the ratio of that it is called as transformer utilization factor and if I want to define it it is defined as TOF is defined as, defined as the ratio of DC output power to the AC rating, AC ratings of the transformer, of the transformer means what actually we have provided to the transformer. So how we can calculate that? It will be TOF is equal to, yeah, DC power can be calculated as BDC into IDC. And now we will, what will be the formula for AC ratings? Of course, it will be VRMS multiplied by IRMS. VRMS multiplied by IRMS. Remember this. Okay. Now, see, there is a slight difference in this. Now, what is the meaning of slight difference? See, the value of VDC and IDC remains same because it is the output side. So I will be considering VDC is equal to Vm by pi multiplied by IDC is equal to Im by pi divided by VRMS. Now how VRMS can be calculated? See this, the value of VRMS, now I need to consider the primary side. And for transformer, the VRMS value is given by Vm by root 2. You must have studied in the electrical that you were having in the first year. So the prime, the voltage is Vm by root 2. So here I will not be taking the, the rectifier value VRMS but I will be considering it to be the secondary RMS value which is called as VRMS, uh, Vm by root 2. So VRMS will be replaced by Vm by root 2 and the current flowing through the circuit is going to be same which is Im by 2. See this Vm by root 2 but I am by 2 because current flowing through the circuit is I am by 2 that we have already calculated. Okay, so let's solve it. So it is going to be Vm I am by pi square multiplied by 2 root 2 upon Vm into I am. So I'm just cancelling Vm I am. So it is going to be 2 root 2 upon pi square. So it is calculated by our calculator. So it is going to be 2 root 2. Okay, let us have this. Just 2 root 2 divided by pi square. So it is coming out to be 0 0.286. It is coming out to be. 0.286. So if I calculate in terms of percentage, you know, if I multiply it by 100 to calculate the percentage, it will be 28.6%. See, the efficiency that we calculated came out to be 40.6%. 
but actual efficiency is for 28.6 percent means if you are utilizing or if you are considering what actually you provided to the transformer and what is being converted you will find that the ratio the percentage comes out to be 28.6 means only 0.286 of the input is being utilized for the rectification purpose the rest is not being utilized and that's why this is called as half a rectifier because it is not utilizing the entire ac power for the conversion purpose okay i hope you have got this uf transformer utilization factor is nothing but it is the ratio of the dc output that you actually get to the actual input that you provided at the transformer side means primary of the transformer till now we were considering this point because we were stepping down the voltage so we were considering step down voltage rather than the ac voltage okay so i hope you have understood this now let us go for the next parameter that parameter is called as percentage regulation that is called as percentage regulation so let us go for that so i'll be writing the next point that we will be seeing it is called as percentage regulation represented by capital r what is percentage regulation say this we can calculate the dc voltage vdc by two formula one is by the formula that we have derived which is called as vm by pi another is by ohm's law where vdc is equal to idc multiplied by rf plus r simple ohm's law i've used now these are the two ways by which i can calculate the dc voltage okay the answer of these two values should be same right but there is a slight difference you know why because here we have not used any load and here the load of rf plus rl is so there will be a voltage drop because of these resistances so what is the percentage regulation percentage regulation is calculating what is the difference between the no load voltage to the full load voltage no load voltage to the full load voltage why no load voltage because here we have not used any resistor and here we have used the resistors so percentage regulation is defined as the ratio of vdc no load minus vdc full load upon vdc full load into 100% see this vdc no load where you have not used any load minus vdc full load where you have used the entire load of the circuit how many resistances are there so if you are give if you are given with the secondary resistance of the transformer that will be added to this okay so i will write this is your vdc no load and this is your vdc full load so the formula will be vm by pi minus vdc minus idc into rf plus rl divided by idc into rf plus rl multiplied by 100% why because we are taking the percentage regulation so you have got this calculate the value of vdc considering the formula vm by pi here we have not used any resistors so that's why this value is called as vdc no load and then calculate the value of vdc considering the full load of the circuit that is idc into rf plus rl where rf is the forward resistance of the diode and rl is the load resistance if the secondary resistance is also given secondary of the transformer load uh, resistance is also given so that will also be added so this formula will become then idc multiplied by rf plus rs plus r forward resistance of the diode secondary resistance of the transformer and the load resistance of the circuit okay so this is vdc no load 
minus VDC full load upon VDC full load into 100% that will give you the percentage regulation. So it should be as small as possible. It should be as small as possible. So when we will be calculating the number in the numericals, you will find that the value of percentage regulation comes out to be quite low. Okay. Now let's move towards the last two parameters. Very easy kind of parameters uh, they are, and that is called as the first one is called as form factor. Form factor represented by capital F. Now what is form factor? It is the ratio of it is the ratio of it is the ratio of RMS sorry I forgot right it is the ratio of RMS voltage or current to the DC voltage or current okay so I will write F equals to the ratio of RMS voltage or current so it is VRMS upon VDC or I can write it is IRMS upon IDC same thing so either you can write it in terms of voltage or you can write in terms of current so let us try to find its value so IRMS value is IM by 2 and what is IDC value it is pi by m. Okay. so I am I am cancelled it is pi by 2 so if it is pi by 2, so it is 1.570, 3.14, the half of that 1.57, okay. Now it is, one of the interesting thing I want to tell you, we can relate it with the ripple factor that we have seen, see this. Now the ripple factor, small r was given by under root of, VRMS upon VDC whole square minus V. This is the this was the formula that we used in the previous slides. Okay, now, but this VRMS upon VDC is nothing but it is form factor. So I can write form factor square minus one. See VRMS upon VDC is form factor. So form factor square minus one. That is under root of 1.570 square minus 1 so let us calculate that uh, so it will be 1.57 square 0 square 0 square minus 1 and then a root of answer so it comes out to be 1.21. See, I have told you the ripple factor will always be 1.21. So in terms of form factor also you can represent the ripple factor. Now let us go for the last parameter of this which is called as peak factor. Which is called as peak factor represented by capital P. And what is that? It is again a very easy uh, formula for this. So it is... So we just write it is the ratio of peak voltage or current to RMS voltage or current. So we can write capital P is equal to Vm that is the peak voltage upon VRMS or Im upon RMS. Let us put the values. So IM is IM as it is multiplied by IRMS is 2 by IM. So IM IM cancels and the value comes out to be 2. So the standard value of the peak factor is 2. Okay. Let us summarize the things what we have seen because this is what we need to repeat for the full rectifier also. So, what are the different parameters that we have calculated? We started with DC voltage that was, so I am writing it here, half a rectifier which was Vm by pi, then we calculated IDC that was Im by pi, then I calculated PDC 
which was vm im by pi square then i calculated vrms which was ac input current and that came out to be vm by 2 then i calculated irms from there that was im by 2 then we calculated pac which was input power so that came out to be vm im upon 4 then we calculated percentage efficiency that was pdc upon pac and it came out to be 40.6 percent standard value then we calculated ripple factor amount of ac present in the dc output and it came out to be 1.21 the formula was under root of vrms upon vdc whole square minus 1 or irms upon idc whole square minus 1 then we have seen the next parameter called as piv peak inverse voltage the maximum negative voltage or reverse bias voltage that you can apply to the diode and it is magnitude wise vm then we calculated the transformer utilization factor which came out to be 0 0.286 actually what we applied to the transformer and how much of it will be converted to the dc that is transformer utilization factor then we calculated the percentage regulation vdc no load minus vdc full load upon vdc full load into 100 percent then we had uh, the last parameters that is called as form factor whose value comes out to be 1.57 and last one is peak factor whose value came out to be 2. So these are the 13 parameters that we have seen for half your rectifier. Similar 13 parameters we will be calculating for full wave rectifier and then we will be comparing half wave rectifier with full wave rectifier. So I will not be taking numericals based on uh, okay so let us do one thing in the next lecture we will be taking the numericals based on half wave rectifier let us finish half wave rectifier first and then we will move to full wave rectifier. Till then if you are having any queries you can ask me, otherwise uh, you can go through the video that I will be posting and clear your doubts and if you still have some doubts you can ask me anytime. Okay, thank you.